Hello, dear friends. May the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Almighty God, open your mind right now in order for you to be able to see, understand, comprehend His Holy Word. Because the Word of God is not a religion, it's not a doctrine. The Word of God are the advices of a father to his children. So when the children obey these advices and follow them, then for sure they will be blessed because they are placing into practice the Word of God. And God Himself said that the word that goes forth from His mouth will not return to Him void. So it will be fulfilled as it pleases Him, He said. However, however, in order for the children to be able to proceed obeying and following the Word of God, it's necessary to sacrifice, to make sacrifices. Pay attention. Just for you to understand the, the way that faith works, the intelligent faith in the Word of God. For example, there is a couple. A couple has a misunderstanding and one is upset with the other and they go to sleep in one room and the other one in the other. So there is no peace between them. And why not? Why there is no peace between them? Because there was a disagreement. There was a misunderstanding. There was a disagreement between them. And this disagreement made them grow apart. And this is exactly how it happens with God. If you do not agree with God, then you are going to be separate from Him. And away from Him, there is no peace. Just as for as long as the couple does not understand one another, as long as they don't sacrifice for one another, then it's not possible for there to be togetherness and peace between them. It's simple. It's very simple. However, there has to be sacrifice from both sides. It's not enough. For example, Esther and I, we get along really well, wonderfully well. However, it's not that we are, let's say, a person that doesn't care about anything and let things happen on their own. No, we all have our own individuality. We have our own individualities. But once married and united and agreeing and one giving their life for the other, then there has to be the sacrifice of self-denial. I have to deny myself and she has to deny herself so that then we can live in such communion. So I have to sacrifice many times certain desires I have and give in to her desires. And in the same way, she has to sacrifice her will to do my will. And so this way we have peace in perfect peace, in harmony. <laughs> so, dear friend, with God is not different. When you make a covenant with God, which means when you marry God, let's put it this way, you give yourself to Him, you surrender to Him, and you promise 
you make vows on the altar that you will serve him, that you will love him, and so on, that you will do his will, then, of course, obviously, that from God's part as well, there will be blessings and the reward. It's like what King David said, directed by the Holy Spirit. He said, Delight yourself also in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Now, if you don't please the Lord, you don't delight yourself in Him, how will you have peace with Him? You won't be able to. And once you have no peace with God, you have no peace with anybody else. That's the truth. If you can't get along with God, God and you, you and God, then how can you get along with other people, with your spouse? How? It's not possible. Therefore, dear friend, peace requires sacrifice. For example, for example, see how faith works. We learn faith, communion, relationship with God, communication with God by hearing His Word. When we hear the Word of God, then we are made aware of what we have to do and what we shouldn't do. So we are made aware of our responsibilities just as we are made aware that He also will fulfill His promises. So we have this understanding this understanding of the will of God. Now, pay attention. What do we have to do? When we have the understanding that we are going in the wrong way, that we are in the path of sin, then once we get to know the Word of God, then we convert, then we make a turn. We make a 180 degrees turn. Meaning, if we are going north, then we turn around and go south. Let's put it this way. So, we convert. Conversion is to change our ways, to change the direction. So, if you are going towards your heart, but then you hear the word of God, and then faith comes for you to give yourself to doing and following God's direction. This is called conversion. When we convert, then God, God, through the Holy Spirit, gives us repentance. It's He who gives us repentance. So we feel sad due to the wrong life we used to live. We forsake the wrong life. We are able to see the mistake that we were making. So, once you have faith, that's the first step. Then comes the second step, which is conversion. You change direction. And then third comes repentance. And with repentance comes forgiveness from God. And when a person repents with sincerity, then they receive God's forgiveness. And when they receive God's forgiveness, finally they receive peace. The perfect peace. The peace of God that we spoke about yesterday. So, as the Apostle Paul said, directed by the Holy Spirit, he said, but let the peace of God rule, let it be the judge over your heart. Which means that God's peace is the guide of our conscience. If there is something wrong that we've done, then straight away our conscience will accuse us. It will throb. 
and we lose that peace. We lose it. Why? Because there's something wrong. We know there's something wrong. And when we know that there's something wrong, then if we are in our sound mind, we will then get on our knees, we will humiliate, humble ourselves before God, we will sacrifice our mistakes, we are going to abandon our mistakes, and we move forward. Pay attention, repentance is not a feeling. It's not a feeling of remorse, for example. Remorse is when a person abandons, they leave their sin behind, they abandon what they are doing wrong. And this is as clear as day. It's not just that feeling of guilt, of remorse, because you did something wrong. No. It's an action of faith. Repentance is an action. It's action. It's a decision. And when a person makes that decision, it's God who gives us repentance. He gives repentance, faith with repentance, and then we receive peace because He also forgives. How nice. Therefore, dear friend, evaluate your life, check well how your heart is, your conscience, and if there is anything throbbing, hurting, that offends, that is in disagreement with God, then it's because there's something wrong. Obviously, you have no peace. Fix this. Get right with God. Get right with God. The altar is the place where people go to and they surrender. They pour their entire life, their heart, their mind, all of their feelings, all of their future, their dreams, projects, they place there on the altar and as a reward, the Holy Spirit comes and then indeed comes peace and the baptism with the Holy Spirit. And this is the proposal that we have for you, dear friend, that God has for all of us. And tomorrow, as it happens every Sunday, we are going to have meetings focused on this purpose, leading people to the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the altar. May God bless you all, and until then, in the name of Jesus. Amen.